Hey, what's going on everyone? This is DZ here. Today I want to show you how I play one of my favorite heroes in Vainglory. It's going to be Taka, and I'm going to be using a full crystal build. So without much further ado, let's get started. Let's begin with Taka's heroic perk, House Kamuha. Every 5 seconds, Taka's next auto attack is a mortal strike. When this occurs, Taka deals extra weapon power damage, he gains a burst of movement speed, and is also granted a 25% cooldown reduction on his abilities. Mortal Strikes also add a stack of key. Each stack of key reduces the Mortal Strike timer by 0.9 seconds. At a max of 5 stacks, the 5 second timer now is refreshed every half second. In addition to the Mortal Strike itself, Taka's abilities, Kaiten and Kaku grant 1 stack of key, and his ultimate Retsu adds 3 stacks. In this clip, I have just finished my jungle camp with full stacks of ki. I do not have boots while the black feather does, but using my kaku for the speed boost and my kaiten to gap close, my repeated mortal strike procs allow me to keep up with the black feather even after he uses his boots. Taka's A ability, kaiten, is a somersault thing on a target minion or enemy hero. When using kaiten, Taka flips over the target, landing on the opposite side while dealing crystal power damage. During the somersault, you can dodge anything if timed correctly. I overdrive this ability first to get the free energy usage at 5 ability points. Here, I go in for a gank behind the enemy team. I focus the sky, but I experience lag and instead of killing her, I use Kaiten to reposition myself to fall under my turret safely. Next up, in a battle against a black feather, he retreats to his turret. While I dive him, I use Kaiten to dodge the first turret shot. I would have gotten hit by two and possibly have died. Instead, I have enough health to regen and come back for the kill. Taka's B ability is Kaku. Upon activation, Taka instantly disappears and remains invisible for the next 4 seconds. During this duration, you will heal hit points. The more crystal power you have, the more hit points you can recover. Using this ability also gives you a speed boost for the duration. Your stealth can be broken if you perform an auto attack, an ability, or when you are damaged by an area of effect attack. However, you can use your reflex block to stay stealth if that happens. I will max this ability last, putting only a total of 4 ability points into it. Keep in mind that if you use Kaku poorly, the enemy will still be able to see you if they have scout traps around the map or if they use a flare on your current position. Not only can you use Kaku to hide from your enemies, but you can use it to scout for your team. Here I located the enemy Ringo so that my Ringo can use his Hellfire Brew safely. We then delete him simultaneously. However, if you notice a pattern of well-placed scout traps by your opponent, using Kaku as a scout is not a good idea. Here I try to surprise the saw, but the enemy uses the flare. I make a bad call in using Kaku, but I turn around and get the kill on the saw, giving me a speed boost, and then I run into the bushes and use Kaku to juke the crew. Taka's ultimate, X-Retsu, is one of the farthest and fastest abilities in Vainglory. At a 9 meter range, Retsu provides high burst damage with a reliable gap closer. I can build key stacks based on the level of points invested into it. I max this ability any chance that I get. In this fight, I target the Rona with my Retsu. She is able to escape from my team, but Retsu's bleed over time finishes her off. Now I will show you Taka's full combo in action. I initiate with Retsu on the scarf, I auto attack, Kaiten, and another auto attack for the kill. Then I walk away. The next topic I'd like to talk about is skill skipping. Skill skipping is a fairly new tactic that involves leveling up at 5 and 6. Not all heroes benefit from this method, but Taka does. At level 4, you should have 3 points in Kaiten, and one point in Kaku. At level 5, you are forced to put a point into Kaku. However, if you wait until level 6, 
you can instead put a fourth point into Kaiten and one point into your ultimate, Retsu. The fourth point gives you extra 65 damage on Kaiten. This makes Taka's level 6 power spike even more formidable. The losses you get from not upgrading the Kaku to 2 points is very minimal, as you only lose 1 second on the cooldown and a total of 40 hit points in healing. Not leveling up Kaku gives you 10 energy cost less and allows for more energy economy to use Kaiten. Now I will go over with you how I build Taku. Keep in mind this is not a static build. Every game has different situations and therefore there are different builds to adapt to all the team compositions accordingly. For the majority of my games, this is my core build. I build them in order from top to bottom, throwing in a reflex block and some boots as needed. Many people like to build weapon power on Taka, but I only like to go full crystal build. The only ability that does scale with weapon power is his heroic part. Going weapon power Taka makes his other three abilities very underwhelming. Taka has one of the lowest base stats for shield and armor. Because weapon power Taka relies mainly on his mortal strikes, the time you spend auto attacking will ultimately get you focused and killed. The build that I use allows Taka to have a stronger impact throughout the entirety of the game. Here are some alternate items that I will use. I use the alternating current or the aftershock if there are a lot of spellcasters on the opposing team. I do not recommend building this against auto attack reliant champions because they have so much sustain to out duel you. The next two items I'm going to talk about are infusions. Infusions give you a ton of stats, armor and shield, plus attack buffs only for 500 gold. This is a very cost efficient item that lasts for two and a half minutes. If you were previously in a fight where you barely won or lost, come back to the fight using one of these items. It will turn the fight into your favor or help you maintain your dominance. At around 15 minutes or more, if you are in the shop with at least 500 gold, I advise you to buy one of these and look for a fight while the active is available. Aside from the reflex block, the second defensive item depends on who my opponents are. Who is their carry? If it is a Ringo, a Cruel, or a Finn with six tornado triggers, I will build an Atlas Pauldron to give me armor, a little bit of shield, and an active with a 4 meter radius that reduces attack speed by 65%. If they are a Scarf, Crystal Power Vox, Crystal Power Taka, or a Celeste, I will build a Fountain to get shield, a little bit of armor, and an active that heals all allies. This is great for team fights. The order in which I buy these items is also dependent on the game flow. If someone is carrying early game or mid game, you need to rush these defensive items sooner than you would if you were the carry yourself. A very important item for Taka is the flare. Using flares allow you to spot other scout traps, enabling you to dive and Kaku out safely. Flares also help Taka in navigating the jungle. As mentioned earlier, Retsu has long range and high speed. Use flares in conjunction with Retsu to jump over the terrain if you are either running away or trying to chase an enemy. Now let's move on to the jungle route. The route depends on who your opposing jungler duo is. If they are aggressive, like Glaive, Koshka, Sky, or a weapon power Taka, it is best to start at your bottom camp, then go to the mid medic, onto your backs, and finally the back medic. In the event that you are invaded while you are doing your back camps, ping your laner to turn that into an advantage and make it a 3v2. On the contrary, if you want to invade their jungle yourself, make sure your roamer knows to hyper level you to level 2 as soon as possible. You want to start with the backs, onto the back medic, then the mid medic. You want to rush to the jungle shop, buy an item, flares, and scout traps. When invading, make sure you use pings to notify your roamer on who you want to focus. 
This is important because the margin of error is very small to get an early kill and snowball the game from there. When you make your first stop to the jungle shop, you'll want to buy two crystal bits. From here, you have many options. You can invade, go for a gank, or go back to farming your jungle. Keep in mind that minions have a one minute respawn timer. Use any of the available time wisely. The pre-level 6 gank. The best way to gank is to go into your bushes. You want to start by using Kaku. Lead your teammates and they will hopefully engage as you are right on the enemy. Your combo is an auto attack, Kaiten, another auto attack, and if the teammates followed up well, you will get a kill. The post level 6 gank. If you see an enemy with low health like the sky here, a level 6 gank is going to be a free kill. Initiate with Retsu and then Kaiten back to your turret. When team fighting as Crystal Power Taka, only use auto attacks for the bonuses that Mortal Strikes give you. Focus your gameplay on your three main abilities. More importantly, know your priorities. You must focus the carries, squishies, and never the tanky heroes. In this fight, I ignore the Catherine completely and focus all my attention on the scarf. I retreat behind my teammates and wait for my cooldowns to come back out. The Scarf uses his Dragon Breath on us. I use my Retsu and Kaiten to cross him up and save my teammates from damage. My next target is going to be Taka. He uses Kaku, but Ringo's Hellfire Brew that allows me to track him and I go in for the kill. At this point, the Catherine is a waste of time, so we go down and try to get the Kraken. Because the Taka and the Scarf are dead, we can easily take this Kraken and start sieging their turrets. Once the Kraken starts taking turret aggro, you can easily Retsu into the turret and Kaiten back safely. Rinse and repeat until the turret is gone. Although this tactic will work most of the time, if the opponent has a double or triple stun composition, make sure you have a reflex block before you go into the turret. In this sequence of events, we are able to take two turrets with a Kraken and a few kills along the way. In this next fight, I focus on the Sky. She has the most damage output, her zoning and her AoE abilities are too much of a threat for your team. Her mobility with Surrey Strike make her difficult for your allies to follow. So as a Taka, Sky is an easy target. Get rid of her first, then focus the Cruel as a team of three. The Saw eventually kills the Blackfeather. The Black Feather gets salty, hoping that I would target the saw port, but Cruel is too much of a threat. His Dead Man's Rush and Spectral Smite give him a barrier and lifesteal to keep him alive. When possible, always focus the Cruel. Moving on, the opposing team just killed our saw, and they tried to take our turret. I focus the Rona instead of the Vox because I can use the turret to aid me in killing the Rona. I then divert my focus onto the Vox. I do not kill him, but I weaken him enough so that he is out of the battle. At this point, the enemy team is on the retreat. I am confident that invading their jungle would be safe to do. The goal here is to take all of their jungle and their minion mine to starve them out of any possible gold income. If the enemy tries to contest their jungle camps, we can easily kill them. If the Vox or the Catherine have not backed to buy new items, then the gold income they receive from our turret is ineffective. A wild Rona appears, but she is deleted instantly. Arden then uses his gauntlet to effectively trap the Vox. We focus him and we get the kill. Once we have full control of the jungle, we take the rest of the minions and then we move on to the gold miner. Doing this will increase the gap of gold income between the two teams. To close out the game as soon as possible, invade their jungle often and keep the lane pushed. The gold you gain can buy new items while the enemy is forced to show up wearing the same items they had in the last fight. Later on in the same game, the saw surprisingly gets caught overextending 
and I come up to hold the lane. The enemy has a numbers advantage on us now. I need to stay close to the turret so that I do not get caught myself. Knowing full well, the Vox has not built anything to defend against me. Zero to one and real quick. I then wait for my cooldowns to reset while staying away from the Catherine and her stun. If she stuns me, the Rona jumps on me and I may possibly die. After killing Rona, I divert my attention into going back into the jungle and stealing more farm. Once again, Saw's hidden passive overextension puts him in a 1v3 fight, but he's able to do enough damage to the Rona for me to come in for the quick kill. The Catherine then chases me, not knowing that I'm 7 and 2. She puts Vox in a precarious situation as he tries to save her. Arden once again comes through the clutch and uses his gauntlet correctly. I am able to 1v1 the Vox and he 1v1s the Catherine. In this fight, I am against a Vox, Ringo, and a Blackfeather. My team makes a bad call starting the Kraken when the other team is at their minion line. Here is where I need to make an important decision. Look at the minimap. I have a larger minion wave pushing their lane. My team still has their tier 1 turret and their team has their base turret. The worst case scenario is that we focus the Kraken to capture it, but the other team focuses us down and gets a few kills or even an ace. And because the Kraken would have such a far distance to walk, they could kill it and gain a substantial amount of gold before it even gets to their turret. I will try my best to avoid the worst case scenario. The Ringo is out of the beginning of this fight because of a well placed gauntlet. I focus the Vox with the Arden. Once he is dead, I Retsu over to the Blackfeather and my Ringo, hoping that I can save my teammate. I am now being targeted by Ringo's Hellfire Brew. I should have used my infusion before the fight, but since I knew that it would give me 30 armor and shield, I pop it for a better chance at survival. With the crystal infusion buff and max stacks on Broken Myth, I melt just about anything at this point. Thank you for watching my first video. My goal is to help new and veteran players learn new strategies and mechanics to their favorite heroes. Stay tuned for more videos and tutorials. Until then, you can catch me on Twitch at the Don DZ. I'll see you all on the Halcyon Fold.